Hello and welcome to the OpenMX video tutorial series. In this video, we will be discussing latent basis growth curves. Latent basis growth curves are a more general growth curve modeling technique for nonlinear trends. In previous videos, we have learned how to model latent growth with the help of latent growth curves. If there is a linear trend in your data, a standard growth curve will probably find it. We then extended this methodology to latent growth curves with a curvature or exponential parameter. These models were really good at modeling data with an exponential growth trend. However, in real life, growth patterns may not be wholly linear or wholly exponential. They may show some odd form of growth pattern. When data shows such an odd pattern, a researcher may want to consider a latent basis growth curve also known as a latent basis growth function. Latent basis growth curves allow for the estimation of oddly patterned growth. These models are only a slight deviation from the standard growth curve model, seen here. The latent basis growth curve, however, looks something like this. This appears very similar to the standard growth curve model, but there are a few key differences. First off, we are no longer measuring a slope term. This new term, which we will call b here for basis, also called shape by some researchers, and this value will represent total change from our first measurement occasion to our last. We estimate this latent variable by freeing some of the loadings from this latent variable to the manifest variables. First, we fix the loadings from this latent parameter to be 0 at the first measurement occasion and 1 at the last measurement occasion. We then allow all loadings in between to vary freely. In this way, we can account for many growth behaviors. Now let's try this model in OpenMX. First, we load OpenMX and look at a summary of our data. If we look at the mean of this variable across time, we will not see any distinctly linear or nonlinear patterns. If we were to plot this, we would see the jagged pattern from the previous plot. This would indicate the need for a latent basis growth curve. Next, we get our manifest and latent variable names. Notice that we have a latent variable b for a latent basis. This model was generated using these parameters. As usual, we will try to use our model to recover these parameters. The rest of this script is fairly simple. First, we create a new model. I'm going to call this model LBGC for latent basis growth curve, and this is a RAM type model. We will make our paths from our intercept and our latent basis to our manifest variables. Notice that I allow the center three loadings from the latent basis to be freely estimated by OpenMX. We then model our latent variances and covariances, as well as the error variances of our model. As in previous videos, I have fixed the measurement error of the manifest variable to be the same across time points. Again, this is for ease of estimation. Finally, we estimate our latent means and input our data. Now let's run this model. Notice we have estimates for the three loadings that we allowed to be free. These loadings estimate the odd growth pattern that we noticed in our data. Latent basis growth curves are interesting because even if our data was linear or quadratic, the latent basis growth curve would still work, meaning that the latent basis growth curve is very versatile. Looking at our estimates of the intercept and total change, we can see that our model did a pretty good job of recovering the parameters of the data. However, as usual, it is always a good idea to check the significance of these parameters. This concludes modeling latent basis growth curves in OpenMX. Thanks for watching.